This is the vital sign skill. Today we're going to be obtaining a full set of vital signs on a patient using the PR Bell's mnemonic. First, I want to make sure that I have my BSI on, my safety glasses and my gloves, and that the scene is safe. First, I'm going to start out by getting the patient's pulse. Because this is an awake and alert patient, I'm going to obtain the pulse at the radial site. I'm going to take two or three fingers. I'm going to locate the radial pulse. I'm going to count for 30 seconds. Multiply times two. I'm going to get rate, rhythm, and quality. The patient has a strong, regular radial pulse of 60. Next, I'm going to obtain a respiratory rate. I'm going to watch the rise and fall of her chest for 30 seconds. I'm going to multiply times 2, and then I'm going to rate, rhythm, and quality. The patient has a respiratory rate of 16, it appears to be regular, unlabored, and she has good tidal volume. Next, I'm going to obtain her blood pressure. First, I'm going to start by getting a palpated blood pressure. I want to uh, gently lock her elbow to draw the artery up to the surface. I'm going to locate her brachial artery on the medial side of her antecubital space, which is a good, strong brachial artery. Next, I'm going to apply the, the BP cuff. I'm going to place this over the arm and make sure that it covers approximately two-thirds of the patient's arm, that it's nice and snug, that it's approximately one inch above the antecubital space, and that the artery points towards, or the artery arrow points towards the brachial artery I found. Next, I'm going to turn this valve off all the way to the right. I'm going to reobtain that pulse under my fingertips. I'm going to inflate the blood pressure cuff until that pulse disappears under my fingertips. I'm going to inflate about another 30 points, stop inflating, and then start deflating slowly. I'm going to feel for the return of that pulse. I'm going to note that on the dial. Once I obtain that number, I'm going to let all the air out for patient comfort. Now that I have her systolic blood pressure of 90 by palpation, and I also know where her brachial artery is, I can obtain an auscultated blood pressure. First, I want to make sure that I have my ear pieces facing in the right direction and they're comfortable in my ears. Next, I want to make sure that my scope is working. I'm going to place the diaphragm of the scope over the area where I found the brachial artery. And then I'm going to turn the valve all the way off to the right. I'm going to inflate the blood pressure cuff to approximately 130, which is 100 plus uh, 30 points above where I originally found her other pressure and I'm going to slowly lower it down. I'm listening for that first beat, which would be her systolic blood pressure. And then as I continue lowering the cuff down, I'm going to listen for the tonal change or when the pulse disappears. And that would be her diastolic. Get all the air out for patient comfort. The patient has a oscillated blood pressure of 100 over 60. Next, I'm going to check her eyes. Now, could you uh, stare at that point, fixed point on the wall there? I'm going to get the size of her pupils first. They appear to be about four millimeters. I'm going to shine a light in both eyes, looking for reaction, constriction. Eyes appear to be equal and responsive to light at four millimeters, so the pearl at four millimeters. Next, I'm going to get a level of consciousness. Now, what's your first name? Judy. And where are you today, Judy? San Diego. San Diego. And what day of the week is it? It's Tuesday. Could you raise your right hand? Lower it down. Thank you. Um, on an FU scale, the patient is A on the FU scale. Uh, she's A and O times three, first in place in time. She follows commands. So on the Glasgow Coma scale, her eyes open spontaneously as a four. She's fully oriented, which is a five. And she follows commands, which is a six, with a total of, of 15. 
Next, I want to get a, a set of lung sounds. And normally, I would do this directly on skin. But I'll show you the locations. Make sure that my scope works. Second intercostal. Open your mouth, take a deep breath now. In and out. Thank you. One more time. Fifth intercostal, mid axillary. One more time. In and out. On this side, man. One more time. In and out. And then posteriorly at the base of the scapula, both sides, in and out, one more time. Great, thank you. Patient has clear lung sounds in all fields. The last thing I want to do is I want to check her skins, skin color, temperature, and moisture. She appears to be pink, warm, and dry. If this patient were a stable patient, I would do this every 15 minutes. If she were an unstable patient, I would reassess her vital signs at least every five minutes.